The Canterbury Tales is a book full of symbols, but let's review the most important ones here. First are the symbols of springtime and flowers. The prologue of the Canterbury Tales begins with an elaborate and famous description of springtime. It's a symbolic, important time of increased sexual desire, fertility, and spiritual rebirth. The sexually themed tales mostly take place in the spring, where flowers symbolize youth and even the vibrancy of pregnancy. The vitality of this imagery well suits the Canterbury Tales pilgrimage, which itself serves as a frame for the other tales. Each of the pilgrims is traveling to Canterbury seeking their own spiritual renewal, but the springtime images rarely represent traditional spiritual symbols, such as Christ's resurrection. Instead, spring is used more as a satirical parody of the follies of youth and sex. Another key symbol is blood. On one hand, blood is a symbol of family, and therefore noble lineage. On the other, it represents Jesus Christ's sacrifice and the blood of many other martyrs featured all throughout the tales. For example, in the Man of Law story, Constance prays for Christ's blood to protect her from evil. Clothing is another critical symbol. Clothing, simple or elaborate, reflects the personality of the wearer, just like their stories do. The knight, for example, wears clothing stained with use, reflecting his humble attitude. The squire's clothing is covered in the flowers that represent his freshness and his youth. In contrast, the monk, who is supposed to reject worldly possessions, has fur-lined clothing and wears golden decorations, showing his lack of piety. The prioress, who is supposed to be above vanity, wears her wimple in a way that shows off her face in the most flattering way possible. 